All right, today is the uh, right leg of the no words. Um, yesterday I traveled to the uh, foundry in Bozeman to get the final mold from my foundry. And that was the end of over 30 years of working with that foundry. Boy, I tell you, that was a that was a hard pill to take. But I had to take it. All right. Be right back. Time to play with some clay. Okay, I'm not going to, like I said before, I'm not going to show everything I'm doing because I do cover it in a couple of my instructional videos. But uh, I'll try to show as much as I can. And uh, I apologize for that. I knew I was going to run into problems when I produced the... Uh, instructional videos I knew I would not be able to show everything and uh, I had to figure out how much I can and how much I can't show when I'm sculpting on YouTube but I think I show enough to give some information and get maybe inspire somebody to uh, pick up clay and play with it to uh, just do something with their time that they have besides playing on a computer or on a cell phone. And uh, I'll tell you, when I started sculpting back in 1963, I think it was, I took a ceramic class in high school and uh, I couldn't throw pots I saved my neck I mean I was all fingers and uncoordinated as hell and uh, my teacher said well why don't you try sculpting Dave and uh, so I did and I won three scholarships, or had three scholarships offered me uh, with, you know, people coming to the uh, school and viewing the uh, sculptures and also entering a statewide art contest or whatever it was. This is back when they used to actually compete. They weren't worried about people losing back then like they do now but it was nice to have competition to compete against other students and it was even nicer when I won or had offered two scholarships and won another all of them were wonderful but I ended up going in the Navy instead because my grades in my other classes were too low to get the scholarships <laughs> I didn't pay as much attention to reading writing and arithmetic as I should have I spent all my time playing with my artwork. So, I continued when I was in the Navy, not sculpting, but 
I, I was a cartoonist in the Navy. And actually, with my poor grades in English, I was made the editor of a, of a magazine on a naval base and then on a, an aircraft carrier. And uh, I made the uh, magazine one of the best three in the uh, Navy while I was on the aircraft carrier. But uh, when I got married and we moved to Utah and I worked as a printer or in a printing business at Deseret Press, it was a big, huge printing company in Salt Lake City. And uh, I met a gentleman by the name of Gary Frazen and uh, he kind of gave me a guidance and one of his clients, John Dunlinger, my first client. Well, actually, my first client was a uh, lady who was a secretary at the uh, company I worked at, the uh, Desert Press. Her and her husband bought the first bronze I ever produced. And it was called the Frontiersman. All right, got the leg sketched in. And, uh, It really does take having a three-dimensional model to see how those muscles are uh, formed. And uh, because it's a very complicated set of muscles and uh, where they go and where they connect and all that stuff. So uh, continuing my story of how I started sculpting. This uh, lady and her husband bought my first bronze. And uh, the Frontiersman, it was a sculpture I had done and it was a bust of a Frontiersman. I don't even know if I got a photograph of it. It's been, well, 19... 70, oh gosh, that had to be 1977, oh, over 40 years ago, so my memory's not all that clear as to everything that took place, but took a few of my clays over to John Dunlinger's house, which was a few miles from my house, to show him what I had. And uh, he ended up buying several pieces. And uh, he came into my office at the uh, printing plant the next day and pulled out a wad of the hundred dollar bills out of his upper pocket and counted out 1800 bucks to uh, pay for the uh, bronze that he wanted. I don't remember which, which one it was, but he ended up buying several over a period of a few years. And that really got me started because that told me that I could actually make a living at this. And, uh, so it was that lady and John Dunlinger that got me started. And then I got into a gallery in San Antonio with Helene, Helen Johnson. What a, what a sweetheart that lady was. She passed away some years ago, but uh, she 
got an article on me in Southwest Art Magazine and I think it was December of, or I don't remember what year, month, but 1981, one of their issues in 1981, they ran a seven page article on my sculptures. And uh, surprisingly, that was the beginning. Well, I guess not so surprisingly, that was the beginning of it all. Then the oil crisis struck and that uh, knocked the wind out of the art market in 1981. And uh, I ended up going to work full time at a 7-Eleven convenience store near my house. And I worked the graveyard shift. That was a tough, tough year. And uh, for me mentally, it was a very tough year. Uh, my son, uh, Jason, was hit by a car and had to go to the hospital uh, in Salt Lake. I didn't even have the money to buy gasoline to go visit him at the hospital. I mean, I was just really at the rope's end. And uh, a gentleman came in. He was a manager of a Safeway. And it was just before Christmas when he was hit by the car. And... Uh, the manager didn't uh, of the Safeway didn't know that I had had that problem that my son had been get hit uh, by a car and was unconscious in the hospital. And uh, but he gave me a gift of uh, bread and uh, a twenty dollar bill on top of it. He didn't know it, and I don't think he still does. I don't know who he was, but uh, that $20 got me gasoline so I could go to the uh, hospital. But anyway, that's uh, how things start sometimes. I, uh, I've had my moments of regret and sculpting because uh, it's a very hard thing to be an artist. You're dependent on the economy. And when the economy is bad, you suffer. Anyway, my son came through all that just fine. Uh, he was a little slow thinking and talking because uh, of being unconscious for so long. Uh, he, he was unconscious all the way through uh, New Year's of uh, 19... Well, I can't remember what year it was. Eight, did I say 81? Yeah, it was 81. So he was unconscious all the way through till 82. But uh, a gallery that I got into in Carmel, California, heard about my son, and he she sent me the owner of the gallery sent me a uh, one of the first electronic toys that uh, was a game, and uh, that brought him out of his fog, my son, him playing that forced his brain to work, and uh, I'll always be thankful for that, lady. There are different things that happen in your life, and uh, 
it always works out somehow. Not always for everybody. All right, I'm just uh, doing some final little blending and uh, emphasizing the muscles of the chest. I've got a lot of cleanup to do to uh, get all this just right. That's what takes the hours. It's just the never ending blending. And emphasizing that's gonna have to be it for today ladies and gentlemen I'll pick you uh, pick this up next time and uh, You all have a good night. Good night from Montana, <laughs> where it's finally summer. 70 degrees outside, just a delightful day. Good night. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.